Well, today you get me. <laughs> oh, it is such an honor to always to be able to teach the Word of God. What a privilege He gives us when we're able to be used by Him and we are able to share of His goodness and tell others, hey, God does have a future and a hope for you. He has a plan for you. And no matter what, you know, no matter what messes we make with our life, God is able to redeem them, turn them around, and set our feet on solid ground. Amen? <clears throat> well, I just want to do something. You all know Mr. Paris that plays the sax. He has been having difficulty with his back. And so I want us to pray because he is an amazing gift to the worship team, to this house. And I'm going to ask you to make him your prayer assignment. And uh, we're praying for healing in his back and in his hip. And we declare that the gift that is in him is needed in this house every service. Amen. So just in case, if he's watching online, Paris, we love you. We speak the word of God over you in Jesus' name. Would you give God a shout of praise for him? <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come in the name of Jesus, and we lift up the servant of God to you. We lift up Paris to you, and we declare what the word of God declares over him, that he is healed from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Every bone, every marrow tissue, that it lines up with the word of God in Jesus' name. We say your gift is a gift to heaven, and it is a gift to earth. It is a gift to this church. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we declare, Paris, that by the stripes of Jesus, you are the healed of the Lord in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. Amen. Say this with me. Matters of the heart. You know, the Bible says that men look on the outward appearance, but God looks upon the heart. And so what is in our heart, what motivates us really, really matters to God. You know, we do what is right because the word of God is the blueprint for our lives and we do it because we know it's right. Amen? We want our heart to be right. We love even when we don't receive love back. Because why? The Bible says for us to love. There is great reward when we follow after God. And when we obey the word of God. And we just say, regardless of how I feel about this situation... Do you ever have times maybe you don't feel so much like what the Word says about a situation? Come on, be honest, be real. Because you know why? Your feelings are involved. Your emotions are involved. But when we will say, God, regardless of the disappointment, regardless of the emotion, regardless if there's hurt involved, whatever it may be, regardless... I will do, my heart will do what is right because the Bible shows me what to do. Amen? Would you give him praise? Come on, just say, matters of the heart. Your heart matters. It really matters. And I pray that we teach the next generation of how important our heart is to God. Would you turn with me to Psalms 57, and I'm going to read chapter, uh, verse 5, and then 7 through 11. Psalms 57, verse 5, 7 through 11, out of the New King James. It, verse 5 says, Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and let your glory be above all the earth. We are looking for the glory of God, are we not? Verse 7 says, my heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing a 
and give praise. In the King James, it says, my heart is fixed. I think God is looking for our hearts to be steadfast and our heart to be fixed in the world that we live in. Amen. Verse 8, awake my glory. Awake lute and harp. I will awaken the dawn. That means I'll get up early and I'll praise you, Lord. I'll get up early in the morning and I will praise you, O Lord, among the peoples. And I will sing to you among the nations. God is looking for praisers. When you can get up in the morning and you get up early and you're determined when your feet touch the ground, my praise goes off. When, you know, even in bed, sometimes I can hear Jamie praising the Lord or I'll be praising the Lord. And, and I'm just laying there and saying, God, I'm so in love with you. I praise you, God, because there's nobody that's been as good to me as you have been good to me. Amen? And so David was saying, listen, I'm setting the example before you. I will get up early. I'll get up before dawn, and I will bless the Lord because the matter of my heart is to praise him and to worship him and to lift him up. You know, I've heard it says when the praise goes up, the glory comes down. We want the glory all over the earth. Hallelujah. Verse 10. For your mercy reaches unto the heavens and your truth unto the clouds. Will you read verse 11 with me? Be exalted, O God, above the heavens and let your glory be above all the earth. Say this with me. My heart is steadfast. My heart is fixed. You know that you are mature in God. When you can say that and you're not moved by the circumstance, your faith and your declaration isn't up and down, but it is fixed in God. And I love it when you hear somebody say something about someone and, you, and then in your heart you say, I know that ain't true. I know that can't be true because I know who they are. What are we saying? We know their heart. Amen. We know that their heart is fixed. There are some things as a believer. Well, I'll use me and Jamie as an example. There are some things you just cannot talk us out of. It's because our hearts are fixed. We've walked it out. We've seen God be true to his word. We've seen him be faithful. And it doesn't matter what the day may bring. My heart is fixed. My heart is steadfast. Come on. Say it over yourself. My heart is fixed. Glory. I think that is awesome. When the things of the day don't change you. When the challenges don't change you, you don't begin to talk different. You don't begin to plan different. You are who the Bible says you are, and you do what the Bible says to do. Praise the Lord. Say matters of the heart. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 through 27, out of the New Living Translation, it says, Guard your heart above all else. Say that with me. Guard your heart above all else. Now read this with me. For it determines the course of your life. Wow. Guard your heart above everything, church, because it determines the outcomes of your life. You know, we said it this morning, Jeremiah 29, 11. He knows the thoughts he has towards you and the plans. But are you guarding your heart so that you can walk out the, those plans and the blessings of the Lord? Say, I'll guard my heart. Verse 24 says, avoid all perverse talk. Stay away from corrupt speech. All right, you got your your grown-up pants and everything on today. 
Say, I'm grown up in God. Say, we can take this. All right. Avoid all perverse talk. Stay away from corrupt speech. Look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. And then verse 26, uh, mark out a straight path for your feet and stay on the safe path. If you will do it God's way, there is a safe path for you to travel. Verse 27, read this with me. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. One more time. Don't get sidetracked. Church, it is so easy to get sidetracked, isn't it? You know, uh, I think the, the two major things that help us to stay on course. Number one, praying in tongues. If you don't have your prayer language, I encourage you to ask for it. It's a free gift that God will give to you. But honey, where would we be if we didn't have our prayer language? We, we would be in trouble. We pray in tongues a lot. Why? Because when you pray in the spirit, you are praying the perfect will of God for that situation. And Catherine Coleman, I don't know if any of you know Catherine Coleman, but she always said when you pray in the spirit and you're praying in your heavenly prayer language, that is heaven praying through you, and that is the prayer that always gets answered. So when you don't know what to do, just pray in tongues. Amen? Apply your faith towards it and just pray in tongues. But as we look at this, in Proverbs 4, he's dealing with the heart, he's dealing with the mouth, he's dealing with the eyes, and he's dealing with the feet. Let me read it to you again real quick. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Avoid all perverse talk. Stay away from corrupt speech. If you're around corrupt speech a lot, you're around the wrong people. Get a new crowd. Faith-speaking crowd. Amen. Verse 25, look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet and stay on that safe path. And don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. When your feet want to go the wrong direction, you just grab your feet and you just make them. Make them move. Whatever you got to do. But you just say, feet, you are not going there. The feet can't go if you don't go. So don't get sidetracked and don't go to the places or environments of evil. We are very big in this house about environments. Guarding the house. Guarding the anointing. And I've shared this with you before. Uh, Brother uh, Kenneth Hagan. He went into a pastor's house, and as soon as he walked in, he told the pastor, he said, Pastor, harsh words have been spoken in this house. Atmosphere. I've told you before that long after your words have been spoken, the influence of them live on. So choose your words wisely. Say matters of the heart. Now, I want to encourage us today that we don't allow the world to tell us what is right and what is wrong. I have been listening to the news, and it's mind-boggling. But if you, if you read the Bible, the Bible says that in the last days, they will call what is right evil and what is evil good. If they can get you to shut up your testimony, they just won. You are a living epistle. You have got something to say about your walk with God and the goodness of God. Because your heart has been touched. And it's not just touched one time. But every day, many times a day, the Holy Ghost is prompting our hearts and speaking to our hearts. And we have got to learn to live 
Listen, we have got to learn to live from the inside out instead of the outside depositing on the inside. Amen? We got to learn to live by what we know by the word of God is truth. It doesn't matter what the world mocks at. The word of God is settled forever and forever and forever. And it will not change. The word will not change with the tides of time. The word doesn't change according to world pressure. The word is forever settled. Say it with me. The word is forever settled. I'm going to read to you out of Romans chapter 12. And it's out of the J.B. Phillips translation. And they don't have it back there. We couldn't purchase it. So I said, just don't put anything up because I don't want to confuse you. But uh, the J.B. Phillips translation is a great one. Uh, Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. With eyes wide open to the mercies of God, I beg you, brothers, as an act of intelligent worship, to give him your bodies as a living sacrifice, consecrated, say consecrated, to him and acceptable by him. Don't let the world around you squeeze you into its own mold, but let God remold your minds from within. Hallelujah. I told you, you got to learn to live from the inside out. The spirit man has to be the dictator of the day. Amen. And so again, let God remold your minds from within so that you may prove in practice that the plan of God for you is good. It meets all his demands and moves towards the goal of true maturity. God's word is the blueprint for our life. Amen. And God is wanting the church to be mature in him, grown up in him. We are in the last days. I don't know if he'll come tonight, tomorrow, a year, five years. Does it matter? What matters is that we are a mature believer. And that we are always ready to meet the Lord. Amen. I believe that in mature houses of God, the Holy Ghost can flow. In mature houses of God, the presence of God has free reign in the house. Say, we are a mature house. Well, in verse 3 through 8, it says, as your spiritual teacher, hey, I give this piece of advice to each one of you. Don't cherish exaggerated ideas of yourself or your importance. He's saying be humble. But try to have a sane estimate of your capabilities by the light of the faith that God has given to you all. For just as you have many members in one physical body, and those members uh, differ in their functions, so we, though being many in number, uh, compose one body in Christ, and we are members of one another. Say, one family. Many members. Through the grace of God, we have different gifts. If our gift is preaching, let us preach to the limit of our vision. If it is serving others, let us concentrate on our service. And if it's teaching, let us give all we have to our teaching. And if our gift be the stimulating of the faith, I love that, encouraging, stimulating of the faith of others, let us set ourselves to it. Let the man who is called to give, give freely. Let the man who wields authority think of his responsibility, and let the man who feels sympathy for his fellows act cheerfully. So I say to you today, whatever your gift and your anointing is, 
as a matter of the heart, you want to be faithful and serve God with that gift with all of your heart. Amen? You have to put your heart into what you're called to. And it's not always, you know, easy. You don't just stand here and not spend hours and hours of preparation. <laughs> Isn't that right, babe? You know, you're up here because you paid the price to be up here. And you're walking with God. The matters of your heart are right well, my desire is that our lives bring glory to God. I pray that Grandview Church is a church that's on fire, a church that is ready to be used, that God doesn't have to say, hey, church, I need you to do this, and then we have to build our faith, we have to get our trust, we have to get up of our cans so that we can do more. No, I pray that we are a church that is ready to be used by God to the full. Amen. Give me a shout. Hallelujah. That we are ready to be used. My heart's cry is, Lord, use this house and use everybody in it for the kingdom purpose of this region. Amen. For whatever you want done, Lord, use us. May he not have to come and take your chair and turn it over to get you to get out of your seat. Okay, go ahead and give praise. <laughs> But that's true. Sometimes we're just so comfortable. It's easier just to come in and sit down and then to, then to work. But you know what? For the most part, there's not much reward in coming in and just sitting down. I say that with all the love in me. I say that with the love of Jesus. Amen. But we want to impact the lives of others. And the only way that we can do that is by saying, God, I'm available. I'm available, Lord. You need me to witness to that lady at the uh, checkout counter at Walmart. Lord, I'm your woman. I'm ready. I'm available. I may not know the whole Bible, but I know of your goodness, and I know of your faithfulness. I know of your healing power. I know of your provision, that whatever she needs, the reason you're sending me to her, that whatever she needs, you are the God of the resource of that. Hallelujah. So Colossians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, and I'm going to do this out of the English Standard Version. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Verse 7, and whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the Father through him. He is saying, whatever you do, do it through him. Whatever you do, trust on an anointing to be able to do it. You and I, we are very limited. But when we hook up with the Holy Ghost, and we hook up with the Word of God, and we hook up with the presence of God, I'm going to tell you, hell has to flee. Sick Sickness has to go. Bondages fall to the ground. Strongholds destroyed. When we will hook up with God and say, God, I want to be in part of your plan. I want to be used by you. Whatever you do in word or deed, do it. Just depend it upon the Holy Ghost. Let our lives be an example of the word and wisdom. The first requirement to make an impact on somebody is that the word of God has to dwell in us. That's what we just read. Let the word dwell in you. Amen. So that we can speak beyond our own challenges, matters of the heart, so that we can help somebody beyond. You know, I could be having a really, really bad day and God say, hey, Debbie, go minister joy to this person. And in the natural, you're like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Don't you know what I'm going through today? 
There, call that other lady to go do it. But you know what? When you sow seed out of your need, it is amazing what God will do for you. We sow the seed out of our issues. Amen? We're not going to camp there. We're going to say, God, no matter what, you use me. And then the word is the path for a purposeful and impacting life. If we want to be used by God, we got to have the word in us. We have no roadmap of how to live out challenges if we don't have the word. You got to have the word. You got to have faith. Come on, say faith. faith. Faith, knowing that all things will work out for my good. That's his word. Amen. And so then we read this in Proverbs. You got to be on the right path. Be on the straight path. And I'm just asking all of us today, if we were to examine our path, what path would we be on? Are we on the path of the word and the path of the spirit? Or are we upon the path of the flesh? The flesh is our own unrenewed self, our old man. But you know, when Jesus came in, the Bible tells us that our old man was done away with. That we are a new creation in God. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, that is just mind-boggling. When he says, I'm a new creation, he is saying, Debbie, you are a person who never existed before. Hallelujah. Changed. Made in the likeness and the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when that flesh tries to pull up on me, I've got to make a decision. What path am I, am I going to go on? And I'm going on the path of the flesh, which just leads to destruction? Or am I going to go on the path of God, the word, the blessing, which always leads to favor, prosperity, peace, victory, success? That's the path I want to be on. Amen? And I don't think any of us can say that we never have a tug of war going on. That's why the Bible says that we must renew our mind according to the word of God. And that's why I was saying we have got to learn to live from my spirit man. I've got to learn to live from the inside out and not from the affairs of the day or the challenge that is right before me. The flesh is strong. The flesh pulls up on us. You know what? One thing about the flesh, it always wants to have the last word. It is amazing to me. I got now, this isn't talking about flesh, but there's a show on, and I won't say what it is, on HGTV, and it's a couple. And they're real, I like their show, very clean, very good. But no matter what the conversation is, the woman is always going to have the last statement. (laughs) Isn't that true? He knows what show I'm talking about. No matter what, even if she can only say, you're right. (laughs) Okay. But she's going to have the last word in that conversation. And it's in every conversation. It's not just once in a while, but whatever the husband says when he's done, he ain't done. The conversation isn't done because she's going to add to it. Well, you know what? In the natural, our flesh is the same way. Our flesh wants to have the final word. Our flesh wants to be right. Our flesh wants to be heard. But with God, matters of the heart, you know what wants to be heard the most is the word living on the inside of you. So if you're going to say anything last, let it be the word of God. Amen? Hallelujah. So we choose God's path, for they always lead to blessing and favor and increase. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 10 through 15, 18 and 26, 26, it says, 
Hear my son and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. I like that. I have taught you in the way of wisdom, and I have led you in the right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered, and when you run, you will not stumble. The word says, take firm hold of instruction. Do not let go. Keep her, for she is your life. Verse 14, do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the way of evil. Verse 15, avoid it. Why don't you read this with me? Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. Isn't that good? Let's read it one more time. Because if you don't need that verse today, I guarantee you, There is a day coming when you're going to need that verse. Let's read it together. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. Don't let your heart get cluttered with stuff that is junk in your spirit. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. All right, verse 18. But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines even brighter unto the perfect day. Verse 25, ponder the path of your feet and let your ways be established. What he is saying, ponder where you're going. Ponder what pulls upon you. Ponder what is in your heart. But let your heart be fixed. Let it be established on the word of God. I think that today in the church, this is one of the most needed messages. That we are fixed. We are steadfast. We are strong in God. We are standing on the word of God. Our confession does not change no matter what. We are who we are. And we do what God called us to do. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so amazed at churches today. Some will allow anything come in. Jamie and I, we're responsible for this house. And we will guard this house. If it doesn't look like God, it doesn't line up with the word of God, it doesn't sound like the word, it doesn't have the presence of God and the anointing on it, can I tell you, it's not coming in. Would you give God praise? But we are in a day, church, where the church can't play. The matters of the heart are are a serious deal for the house of God. Because every day we are making decisions of what path we will walk on. We are making decisions. Will we be quiet when the word of God is being attacked? Or because the matters of my heart won't allow me to be quiet. That I've got to step up and say something. At the last Shoes on the Move meeting, I talked about compromise. And I want to share a little bit of that with you today. And the title of that message is Living a Life of No Compromise. That's what God is looking for. And if we can demonstrate it to our youth and show our teens how to walk the walk, talk the walk, be the walk, do the walk, do the word, be the word, talk the word, don't be ashamed of the word of God. I truly believe we're in the last days. And I believe that God is shouting, church, be ready. Church, be ready. Be the church. Church, stand up and do what I've called you to do. Don't be silent, church. Don't be passive. Don't be weak. 
And if we truly want the power of God in this house, see, this house, it's not just about me and, and my love. Each one of us, when we come in, God give us grace to hear this. Each one of us, when we come in, we bring what's in us here. But you know, that's a great thing because God wants you to come to the house of God and he wants you to get strengthened. He wants you to be encouraged. He provides an atmosphere for change. You know, sometimes we need to come in and just say, hey, God, man, I messed up. But thank you, Lord, I'm under this anointed praise and worship, and I just shake that off of me. Amen? I thank you I can apply the blood of Jesus, and it's gone. It's so easy to get right. But this house, the presence in this house, it's strong because you come in and you're ready to worship. You come in and you're hungry for God. Don't ever lose that of the heart. Don't ever lose your desire to be used by God. Don't ever lose the desire for worship and for praise. And I'm going to tell you, you can come and stand at these altars. You can come and kneel. Sometimes you're just in a place in God that you just want to kneel before him and tell him how good he has been to you. He's worthy of our praise. Amen? We're going to fix our feet. We're going to set our eyes. And our heart will be established on the things of God. Amen? Out of Matthew chapter 22, 36 through 38, one of the Pharisees asked Jesus, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and the great commandment. That's what God is pulling out of us today as a matter of the heart. That we can say, I love you, Lord, above all else. I love you, Lord, above that person. I love you, Lord, above that thing. I love you, Lord, above that desire. Whatever you're not in, I'm not going there. Amen? Come on, give me a shout. Whatever he's not in, we're not going there. How many of you remember Carmen, the singer? He used to sing. <laughs> yeah, I saw your smiles. Yeah, he's good looking. He could sing. And... Um, but he wrote a song called Radically Saved. Does anybody remember that? I want to share the words with you. Because we don't hear much about being radically saved. We don't want to stand out. But I'm telling us, it's time to stand out. It's time to be noticed. Amen? Say no compromise. I mean it. No compromise, church. As Jamie tells you, he doesn't give you permission to quit. I don't give you permission to compromise. <laughs> this is what he says in Radically Saved. I wish I was a rapper or something, but you'll have to take it from me. All right, Jesus Christ is Lord, and God's still on the throne. There's power in the blood, and I'm saved to the bone. The devil comes against me, he's going to feel some pain. I can bind him, bruise him, cast him out in the power of Jesus' name. No longer on the outside, on the inside, I now stand. I'm sold out the whole route, completely born again. Amen? He says, I believe on the third day, that Jesus, he rose from the grave. The world thinks I'm crazy, but I am just radically saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, choose you this day. Tell me who you will serve. Now's the time to stand up. Got to let your voice be heard. You got to come out from among the rest. You got to tell the gospel tale. You tell him, black is black and white is white and hell is hot 
and sin ain't right. God is holy, Christ is coming, and righteousness will prevail. Hallelujah. He says, I tell it to you once. I'll tell it to you twice. The only thing that's going to change this world is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Wimpy saints won't survive in spiritual warfare. If you know that Jesus is the only way, let me hear somebody say, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) On the inside, we now stand. I'm sold out the whole route. Anybody here born again? He says, I believe on the third day, Jesus rose from the grave. The world thinks we're crazy. Our friends think we're crazy. Our family thinks we're crazy. But we are just what? Radically saved. Oh, give God praise. Saved the whole route, radically saved. I just love that. When we talk about a life of no compromise, the definition of that, compromise is going just a little bit below what you know is right. Isn't that powerful? Compromise is just going a little bit below what we know is right. It's making allowance for not hitting the target. And it creeps in so easily. Gloria Copeland, she said, don't ever allow fear to make you compromise your confession of faith. I learned this long ago. What you compromise to keep, you lose. Stand firm and keep talking faith and you'll defeat any attack So I just wrote, what you compromise to get, you have to compromise to keep. And what you compromise to keep, you will eventually lose. There is no great reward in anything that we have to compromise or put before God. The Bible says in uh, John chapter 14, verse 6, he says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. That is real, real life and real reward come from. He says, no one can come to the Father except through me. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Don't compromise on that, church. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. I'll say it again. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And nobody can come to Jesus, can come to the Father without going through Jesus. Hallelujah. I heard T.D. Jake say this. You cannot be who you were and who you are at the same time. Say the old man is done away with. I'm a new creation. He was saying, listen, you cannot be who you were before coming to Christ and who you are now in Christ at the same time. Amen. I would say, man, you're a messed up person. (laughs) You don't know if you're coming or going or what's going on. You know, when Jesus came in, I am so thankful that we can all say that he took all of our yesterdays, all of our messes, and even up to today, if we repent of them, he takes all of that and he throws it away behind us. And it has no power, no strategy to be used against us because the Bible says whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Amen. Say it again. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Indeed, if you think I'm going to give up that freedom for compromise, the devil is just kidding himself. I will not compromise because I want to be used by God. I want the anointing of God to be upon my life. I want to be able to teach the word of God. I'm going to tell you, I don't want to live a life of any compromise. David said what? Oh, Lord, create 
a clean heart within me and renew a right spirit within me. I thought, Lord, if he had to say create a new heart, how many of us, maybe we need God to come in and create a new heart, say matters of the heart, that he would create a new heart in us. And when he creates a new heart in us, I believe we see differently. We talk differently. We hear differently. Amen? That was Psalm 51.10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. He's saying renew a, a fixed spirit within me. I want us, Grandview, to be known as a church that is not up and down, in and out. When we give our word, our word means something. Because we're part of this house, that means something. For we're a family, fitly joined together. Each one bringing their part to the table of God. Amen. Bill Winston says, any instability in your life is due to not believing and speaking the word of God. To live a stable life, you are going to have to consider only what God says. Amen? Say, only what God says. One more time. Only what God says. So no matter how bad it looks, no matter how your flesh is screaming at you, if you stay focused on the Word of God, you will not be defeated, you will not compromise, and you will not be double-minded. You know what? When you're fixed, when your heart is fixed on God and the Word, you have stability in your life. Amen? When the Word of God is fixed in your heart, you have stability. The devil knows. You know what? There's some things that the devil would maybe come at someone else with. But when it comes to Debbie and Jamie, he knows to not even bother. He knows don't try to tempt them with alcohol because they're not going to do it. They have set their course. They have established their lives. We don't drink. I'm going to let you inside our world, okay? And so if he says, hey, listen, you know, the Bible talks about tithing. Well, I'll just get them to want something else other than what they have the funds for right now. And so I'm going to try to get them to compromise on their giving. You know what? He knows that's a defeated act. And that is just not gonna gonna happen. He knows that he that he doesn't stand a chance of trying to bring strife between him and I. We know to guard the atmosphere of our house. There may be days when it's very quiet for a little bit. But you know what we have learned. I gotta tell you, church, this is how I live. Why in the world would I say something to hurt the most precious person in my life to me? I would never do it, nor would he do it. You know, we learn that long after the words have been spoken, the power, the residue of them live on and live on. How many of us have things that we heard five years ago and it's still playing over and over in that mind of ours? And I'm going to tell you, it's like it was just spoken five minutes ago. We can remember everything about it. But you know what? I want to guard my heart and that doesn't belong there. That doesn't belong in my mind. And so I'm going to wash it with the washing of the word and the blood of Jesus. And it's not, it may have been in my past, but I've been redeemed from my past and I don't want it as a part of my future. And only I can change my future. 
Only you can choose what path you're going to go on. I was watching Murder, She Wrote last night when I just want to veg out. And so there was a part on the show that she was, at, she was in a store and she was asking the lady for, a, did anybody else watch it? Yeah? Okay. I do got partners in crime. Yes, I do. And so she was asking the owner of the store if she could provide that lamp with a red lampshade. And the lady just stared at her. I mean, it was not a happy encounter. And, and so Jessica is saying, well, what, am I missing something? And the lady's just staring at her. And she says, is there something I don't know? And the lady's just staring at her. And all of a sudden it comes to, uh, to Jessica. Are you talking about five years ago when you gave me a gift and you didn't get my thank you card right away? <laughs> yes. Yes. And the, and the lady goes on to say, now see, this is how we live, okay? The lady goes on to say, and when the card did arrive, you mailed it three weeks after I gave you the gift. <laughs> see? Matters of the heart. Just think, for five years, that has been on the forefront. We're waiting. This is for somebody. We're waiting for somebody to make restitution to us. I got to tell you, Jesus did it. Don't look for man to do resti restitution to you. Jesus did it. He already he healed you. He provided for you. He, he took care of you. Man, when we get into that mess, we truly are compromising our lives. Don't compromise. Daily, we choose the path that we will walk on. Compromise, as I'm closing, is going just a little bit below what you know is right. The compromises that seem small are what the Bible calls the little foxes that spoil the vine. A person who won't compromise is one that God can trust with his power, his anointing, the mysteries of the kingdom. And when you live a life that you will not compromise on the job in your neighborhood, those around you, people notice that. Others notice your faith walk and your uncompromised way of living. When someone finds out that you're a person who won't compromise, you become very valuable in their eyes. You have credibility that opens doors of promotion and favor for you. Why? Because you can be trusted. Your word means something. Amen? Gloria Copeland says, when we compromise doing what we know is right, it shuts off the blessing of God in our lives. Compromise isn't something, something that seems dangerous in the moment. But hear this. It can change the course of your life. Think of how many people are incarcerated today because they thought, I won't get caught. This, this really won't matter. And it changed the course of their life. Would you stand with me? So I'm encouraging you today to guard your heart and stay on God's path and all things. Going back to the first two verses, Psalm 57. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. My heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. My heart is fixed in Proverbs 4. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Avoid all perverse talk. Stay away from corrupt speech. Look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. Come on, say, it's a matter of my heart. Father, I pray over us right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, that our heart is fixed upon you. Lord, that we are steadfast in you. 
Today, Lord, we examine our lives, not anybody else's. We're responsible for our heart. And Lord, we look at our heart and we say, Holy Spirit, we give you permission to take your Holy Ghost flashlight and shine it within our heart. And Lord, whatever needs to be changed, we allow you to change it. Whatever needs to be yielded to you, Lord, we yield it right now. We don't want to stay trapped or bound to hurt, to the past, to areas where we missed it. We want to live in the glory, in the presence, in praise, and in worship. So, Father, right now, in Jesus' name, I break every stronghold by the word of God, by the name of Jesus, by the blood of the Lamb. Every entrapment, I just declare a way of escape in the name of Jesus. Lord, where we have believed a lie, Lord, I declare that truth comes in that situation. Lord, we just want to be vessels of honor and vessels of glory for you. Not a compromised child of God, not a compromised daughter or son, but we want to be radically saved, sold out the whole route. We know black is black and white is white and sin ain't right. And so, Lord, we declare that we line up with the word of God. What the word says is right is right. And what the word says is evil or wrong is evil. You said to not go into the pathways of evil. So, Lord, we fix our hearts. We establish our heart. We fix our feet. And we declare we are going on God's path. Come on, say it with me. I declare I am going on God's path. One more time. I declare I am going on God's path. There is a lie from the devil, and I want you to hear it. It kept coming to me this morning, and the Holy Ghost just brought it back. There's a lie from the devil that I'll do such and such and then repent afterwards. There's consequences to sin. There's consequences to not doing what you know to be right. Don't get caught up in the trap. There is not one thing that the devil is offering you that is meant to do you good. The Bible says that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So if he is pulling you in any direction and your flesh is tempted, let me promise you, let me promise you, let me promise you that when it is all said and done, you are going to be on the path of hell, kill, death, hate, destruction, strife. It can't be on any other path. But if you will get on God's path, Listen, you've got a discerner on the inside of you. The Holy Spirit lives within you. You don't have to go the path that God's not taking you. But today, the Holy Spirit is saying, Grandview Church, you've got one path. Grandview, you've got one path. Grandview, you've got one path. Grandview Church, you only got one path. And that's to go the path with God, to go the way of the word. Amen. Come on, say one path. I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell them there's only one path. No compromise. It's all about my heart. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him a big praise. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Somewhere in all these notes, 
<laughs> Here it is, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. I heard um, Terry Pearson just in the advertisement. She's saying, when a church walks in purity and love and holiness, the power of God cannot but show up and do great things. Amen? So, church, I'm just telling you, if I was to stand before God tomorrow, I know I gave you the right word for today. That you live your life pleasing to him. No compromise. No, com come on, say it. No compromise. I think it was David that said, I will set no unclean thing before my eyes. If you need to go home and do some house cleaning, you know what I mean? Do some house cleaning. Come on, we're not playing with this. Amen. We're not playing with our walk with God. I'm serious the whole route. I want to be radically saved, totally sold out for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, lift your hands, and this is my final closing. <laughs> I do get two or three. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you in all of your ways. The Lord make his face, his countenance, his blessings to shine upon you. May all that you put your hand to do prosper. May peace follow you in every situation. May the joy of the Lord be yours. May his voice be heard clearly in the morning, in the noon, at night, in the middle of the night. May the voice of God be that one voice that you know right away and you hear and you yield to and you obey. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. God bless you.